Mr. Marco, did you find anything? The only witness found was the one that places you at the scene of the crime. Surely it's a big estate. Someone must have witnessed what really happened. Uh, well, that may be so. But I have not found anyone to corroborate your story. You have to find out of getting me out of here, man. I'm going crazy in there. I'm doing the best I can. Best is not enough. I'll pay you double, pay you triple. Look. Just get me out of here. I'm working around the clock on this case. I've even hired a private investigator. I'm going crazy. Take all of yourself. Under no circumstances should anyone see you lose your cool. But I'm innocent. I just tried to save a life. Am I going to jail? Not if I can help it. Look, has anything come to mind? Anything at all? No. I just ran from the house to the neighbors for help. Next thing I know, I'm being accused of arson and murdering my girlfriend. Can you think of anyone who might have wanted to kill you or your girlfriend? No. It's gonna be a tough one. <sighs> Mr. Marco, you don't know what they're doing to guys like us in there. You must find a way of getting me out of remand. All right. Yes, the Republic versus uh, Billy Bonde. Now, the purpose of uh, today's mention is to set a hearing date. Uh, Your Honor, my client is in remand and uh, we seek an early date for the hearing. Good. I would be most obliged if the matter could be fixed within the month. Oh, that works with me. <clears throat> I have the uh, nine. The 23rd and uh, the 31st. Since Mr. Mwako requested for an early date, I will settle for the 9th. Well, Mr. Mwako, you are in luck. <laughs> the prosecutor is being very kind to your clients. <laughs> Quite the opposite. The sooner he sees my client convicted of murder, the better for him. I couldn't have put it better, Your Honor. Mr. Mwako knows who he's dealing with. Oh, please, don't count your chickens to worry. Well, the ninth is good enough for me. Right, the ninth it is then. Next case.
Well, it's the ninth. I have a crazy day ahead, so be direct and straight to the point. Yeah, yeah the KMR uh, medical insurance has been stated 24 elderly people that have been struck off from the medical scheme, but we are currently working on a suitable insurance premium for them. Good. Senior citizens must be protected. Yeah. Yeah, and the police found the murder weapon in Mr. Jackson Kiliki's office, and they also found a set of prints of our client and the victim's uh, blood on the knife. Well, he's as good as cooked. Stall the case while we fish around for something that will make the judge go soft on him. Okay. Elsie? Roadmap Insurance Limited have refused to insure the liquid assets of Solid Bank, citing downturn in business, yet they have always been their main insurers. Hmm. Sue then. That will bring them back to their senses. Anything else? No. Good. I'm off to court. James Cloney. Oh, hi. You're the person I wanted to see this morning. Sorry, I took longer to get back to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what do you have for me? Uh, the report from the fire investigation. I hope it favors my case. It seals your case. It also proves that Darlene Maputo was murdered. Just what I needed to see. The fire originated from Darlene's bedroom and spread to the rest of the house. The fire was intended to kill Darlene. She was the target. You're willing to testify to this in court? Mm, the reason why I'm here. This was what was used to carry the jet fuel. I'm sure you have the fingerprints lifted. Yes, I do, James. Thanks. Okay, just doing my job. Thank you. Okay. You have a smart look on your face. What's going on? Just trying to keep ahead of the competition. What have you got? New evidence that supports our position that Dalin Maputo was murdered. What? Knock yourself out. You cannot submit this at this stage. It will amount to a number. Sorry I got it this morning. Serious? I will object to it. Be my guest. Good luck. The Republic versus Billy Bondi. Your Honor. I'd like your permission to add to the prosecution's list of exhibits one more document being a vital piece of evidence in these proceedings. We have recently acquired a fire investigation report that explicitly indicates the fire was intended to murder Darlene Maputo. It further supports and cements charges against Billy Bonde. Your Honor, the prosecution had all the time to submit this report. It is being introduced this late to throw the defense off guard and thus use it to their advantage. We have not had time to validate the fire investigation report. Your Honor, we object to these querilla tactics. I received this report this morning in this courtroom and brought it to the attention of the defense immediately. All the more reason why it should not be admitted. The defense requires time to comb through the report, confirm its authenticity and study its conclusions. Not submitting this report would be denying justice to the deceased. <laughs> How about a fair trial for my client? Now you say you received this uh, report only this morning? Yes, Your Honor, and I have the death stamp to prove the same. Now, in your list of exhibits, you did include um, a, a fire report? New information came into light after the first report had been submitted. New information that will cast a better understanding of the same. Can I have a look at this report? Yes, Your Honor. Mm. 
the stamp on this report uh, does show that uh, it was released only today. Is the man who um, did this report here in court? Yes, I do. Mr. Mwako, you will have a chance to uh, cross-examine the man who made this report. We may proceed. Um, the prosecution calls James Loney. James Loney! I'm a Christian. Place your left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand. Do you swear to say the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So may God help you. Uh, yes, I do. Please state your occupation and rank. I'm a senior fire investigator with the Nairobi Fire Department. Were you on duty? When house number 34, Sunset Park Estate in South Sea caught fire? Yes, I was. When the call about the fire came through, I accompanied the firefighters to the scene. Are you also involved in firefighting? No, I'm not. I'm purely an investigator. I went along to study the behavior of the fire, which would let along uh, assist us in knowing the cause of the fire. It's like a preliminary to our investigation. Were there any casualties involved in the fire? Yes, there was one male, he managed to escape. His name was Billy Bonde. Unfortunately for the woman, Darlene Maputo, she did not manage to escape the fire and she was burned to death. In the first report, you indicated that it was unclear whether it was arson or not. Why? It is difficult to determine so because fire often destroys the key evidence of its origin. Plus, most fires, especially residential, are caused by defective equipment, such as shorting of faulty electrical circuits, for example. Um, what led you to reopen the investigation as an arson case? We received information from the police that a reliable witness came forward and testified that um, a man was seen sneaking to the house carrying a five-liter jerry can. This is before the fire started. The same man was seen running away from the house after the fire had caught and was spreading furiously. How did you proceed and what did you discover? Of course, I revisited the scene, hoping and praying for luck to find the jerry can. I took a samples from all the rooms, checked the electrical connections, uh, the electrical equipment too, and I cobbed through the compounds. The gods were with me. I found the jerry can a few meters from the house. I actually was very surprised that I had not found it in uh, our first investigation. I took the jerry can in our laboratories for testing. We realized it contained uh, jet fuel. I sent the same jerry can to the police for dusting of fingerprints. Is this the jerry can you found at the fence? Yes, it is. Your Honor, I'd like to submit uh, this as evidence. Accepted. Um, how about the house? Any new evidence? Since I had found the cause of the fire, I knew what to look for in the house. The bedroom where Darlene Maputo's body was found had most of the fuel residue in the ash. The trail went on to the other rooms, down into the living room where it ended. The combustion was set off in the living room. Did you conduct further investigation in the bedroom where Darlene Maputo's body was found? By now we had realized that the fire was intended to harm the occupants of the uh, bedroom. I checked the remnants of the door and I realized the locks were intact. Implying? Implying that she was locked in the whole time as the fire was burning. And how, however, I cannot say for sure 
if she locked herself in the room or she was locked in by the perpetrator. All in all, whoever started the fire had the intentions of killing Darlene Maputo. You had to visit the fire scene several times before coming up with this report, which was conveniently forwarded on the day of the hearing. We had missed key elements in the investigation. Key elements meaning police tips. How competent is the fire investigation department? They're very competent. Really? In the past two years, we have closed 23 out of 26 cases. Well, this we have done with irrefutable evidence to support the final conclusion of these cases. 23 out of 26. How about the other three? Well, fire investigation, uh, forensics, is very difficult to do. This is so because fire almost destroys every evidence that we need to recreate the scenario so as to solve these cases. Thus, our reliance on the uh, police and the public to point us to the right direction. I see. But I'm just wondering. I can't seem to get this out of my mind. You missed a very vital piece of the evidence, the jerrycan that contained the jet fuel. How much more could you have missed? I put it to you that it is possible there is still some evidence to be found out there, which could throw this case either direction. Are the findings of your investigation conclusive? After we found the jerry can. <laughs> it was lying about in the compound, waiting to be found. Yet you luckily found it. Objection! Where is he headed with the examination? He seems to be asking himself the question and attempting to answer it for him. Mr. Mwako, continue with the question. Thank you, Your Honor. In your first report, you ruled out arson. Today, you come up with another report indicating arson. I put it to you that in the next one hour, you could possibly come up with yet another report indicating quite the opposite of arson. Is he planning on asking a question? Or is he buying time for an imaginary third fire investigation to appear? Marco? Your Honor, I'm, I'm just wondering where this second fire investigation report miraculously came from. I have already ruled it in the evidence. I'll get over it. Thank you, Your Honor. No further questions. Why do you think the perpetrator used jet fuel as opposed to using ordinary fuel? Uh, jet fuel combusts easier and faster. It also requires a lot of oxygen to burn. How would this be important to the arsonist? The fire would consume the oxygen in the house faster, thus getting the victim even quicker. Can't live without oxygen, can we? Further confirming that Dalin Maputo's death was no accident. Precisely. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Hey. Hey, what do you want? I'll get straight to the point. <laughs> Good. What happened between you and Renee? I have better things to do than gossip about an office intern. The office intern you spend all your days and possibly all your nights with. Come on, Joe, what's the story? It's none of your business, Nancy. She was an intern here, so that makes it my business. Nancy. I'm sure that you're aware that she's left. Of course. I'm the one who conducted the evaluation. You conducted the evaluation. <laughs> how did that go? It's not really any of your business, eh? I can only imagine how it went. Your hand. 
Seriously, Elsie, I've got work to do here and you're not helping at all. Listen, I just want to know the reason Renee left. And from the way I see it, you had a hand in it. I had a hand in it? <laughs> Don't you have problems over you to deal with? Huh? Instead of worrying about some dumb intern, go deal with your court wrangle battles. Or you should be out there worrying about your son. That was uncalled for. And so is your interrogation about Renee. Whatever. Officer Asare, you were called in about the same time the fire brigade was called into house number 34, Sunset Park Estate, South Sea, in relation to the fire? Yes. When we arrived at the scene, the fire brigade was already at work. Had you suspected arson? No, I hadn't. Please describe to this court what happened after your arrival. As mentioned, when we arrived at the scene, the fire brigade was already controlling it. I got concerned with keeping the civilian away from the fire. Ten minutes later, a man came to me and informed me that he resides in the burning house. And he managed to escape, but the girlfriend was still trapped inside. What's the identity of this man? The accused man over there, Mr. Billy Bonde. Our attempts to get to the girlfriend were proved futile by the raging fire. We found her burnt body in her bedroom when the fire was put out. Did you conduct any investigations? We concluded it was an electrical fault in the house. There was no evidence mm -hmm. or witnesses to contradict our verdict. When did you suspect uh, it was arson? Um, a neighbor came forward, a witness who had seen Mr. Billy Bondi carrying a jerry can at the dawn of the said day. He hid it at the fence and went into the house. This same neighbor claimed to have seen Mr. Billy Bondi fleeing from the scene minutes before the fire brigades arrived. With this new information, I contacted the fire brigades department and reopened the case. While Mr. John Loney was carrying investigation, I arrested Mr. Billy Bonde and charged him with a murder and arson. Good. Please go on. Knowing that the two were constantly fighting and that the neighbors had launched a complaint against them to the Neighborhood Watch Committee, these fights were particularly disturbing. Why so? According to the neighbors, it's as if Billy Bonde was constantly beating the girlfriend. I never touched her! I never touched her! Or die in my court. But he's lying! So, Marco, control your client. Oh dear, have mercy. Please, don't interrupt the court again. Your Lordship, he won't interrupt. Huh. Well, let's hope so. Proceed. He was seen carrying fuel and fleeing from the crime scene. And we had witnesses to confirm that he was abusing the victim. That was more than enough to carry an arrest. Thank you, Your Honor. Are you married, Officer Sari? Yes, I am. Two years counting. Hmm. So you will relate with my story. When I was young and uh, just married, I used to spend a lot of time hanging out with the boys, as it is called nowadays, and come home very late and sometimes in the morning. My wife, of course, was not amused by this behavior. So she would lay in waiting for me for the time I would come back. The minute I stepped in to the house, she would be on my case, ready to discipline me. She would shout, scream, throw things at the wall at me. She would make so much noise, the neighbors would assume that I was beating her up. 
while it was quite the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> Happens to me all the time. In the morning, it was like nothing happened at all. Couples do fight, but in most occasions, they don't hurt each other. Although somebody else might assume so. Did uh, Maputo make a report about battery? No. In your investigations, did she respond to the committee complaints? No. So, in other words, um, the allegation that uh, she, that uh, Billy Bonte was beating her up were mere rumors by the neighbors because there was no proof of it. I guess so. However, the absence of evidence is not quite frankly proof it never happened. What? Just because we cannot prove that Mr. Billy Bonde was beating up the girlfriend does not mean it never happened. You of all the people surely must be aware of the applications of the law. In courts we do not deal with hearsay, we deal with evidence. What you just said is hearsay. What about the jerry can that uh, contained the jet fuel? Did you find his fingerprints on it? No. No fingerprints. So we can safely assume that you charged a man with murder and arson purely on the basis of a testament of a neighbor without much to go on. Interesting. Ellen Chacho, for how long have you known the deceased? Um, we've been neighbors for the past four years. Did you have a good relationship? Fairly so. We had this sort of a pact of looking up after one another. When one was away, we would look after each other's children and the house. She was my immediate neighbor. I was in house 34 and she was in house 35. What can you tell us about Darlene Maputo? She was a lovely woman and a very good mother. When she moved to Sunset Park Estate, she was married to Cliff Maputo. They had two lovely kids, aged seven and four, Charity and Alan. Very lovely kids. Wow. Did she ever tell you why they separated? Objection, Your Honor. That would be hearsay. Sustained. I will rephrase the question. Did they have any marital problems that you are aware of? Well, she never confided in me about having any marital problems. But I was seeing less and less of him. The next thing I knew, a another man had moved into the house, mm -hmm. a much younger guy than her. Billy Bonde. Yes, that man over there. Did they have a good relationship? How would she know that? Did they appear happy? They looked happy in the beginning. Uh, they were like teenagers in love. The father would pick the kids over the weekend and that would give Billy and Darlene ample time to spend together. Now, not until the fights began. As a neighbor, did you do anything about the fights? Yes, I had to. I reported it to the neighborhood estate committee. Being the immediate neighbor, I would hear everything, everything, even though Darlene was pretending like everything was rosy. I had to report it. She, poor Darlene. She was just suffering in silence. Ellen Chalo, did you notice anything the day the fire broke out? Yeah. The night before, Darlene and Billy had one of their biggest fights. I could hear Darlene screaming for most of the night. Later on at about four when I woke up to change my baby's diapers, 
I looked outside my window and I saw Billy coming in with a jerry can and he hid it in the fence that was made of eucalyptus trees. Interesting. Please go on. It was the screams of Darlene that woke me up at around 12. She, she, was, she was screaming in fear and she kept screaming that she was dying. She was dying. What did you do? I had to do something. I had had enough. So I grabbed my phone and, and I wanted to call the police for help. Mm. But after I grabbed my phone, I looked outside the window and I saw the house billowing in smoke. The house was on fire and, and Darlene was still inside. So I called the police and the fire brigade. But before I could even finish making the call, I saw Billy running out of the house. You are positive it was him? Absolutely. Thank you, Anna. I'm sorry about the outburst earlier on. It was very mean of me. I probably deserved it. Especially while knowing how it is affecting you. Thanks. I was out of line all the same. Yes, you were. But thank you. Everything will be fine. This custody case is killing me. But I won't let it be. Yeah. Yes. Leave you. Leave you. Like any. Where come boom or come a boom? Let me see a politician. Like a sumele and a josema. Or city shike. Abisa. Where a china manager. Oh, you too, you call us. Joe! Hi, Gigi. I just need a cup of beer. Hey! Ambrose, come on. Tell me what's going on. With what? With Renee. Why did she leave? Listen, I know you know everything that happens here. Nothing ever passes you in this firm. Yeah, what you say is true. I knew it. So what's going on? I don't know it. You're lying. I could investigate and bring you all the details with evidence. How do I take a picture of you? But you, there is really... uh, Since I'm investigating, there will be a small fee. Ambrose, please. please. It's a talent to have for investigation. I get for you everything you want. It just means you know nothing. I know, I know, I know. But you don't have to do Isn't it odd that you knew each other for four years 
Yet she never confided in you about her marital or relationship problems. She was a very private person. She had violent fights, yet not once did she confide to you about them. Like I said, she was a very private person. Besides, don't you think it's a bit odd for a man to be beating up their woman at this time and age? It's barbaric. But all you had were screams and shouts. Are you long-sighted or short-sighted? I'm short-sighted. Do you wear specs when in the house? Rarely so. Short-sighted means I can only see objects that are near. That are near. Yes, but not very uh, well when they are far. Yeah. So do you wear your specs when you're changing your baby's diapers? I am in the house. I don't need them. How about in dim light? How is your sight? Just like everybody else, I also have a problem seeing in the dark. How far was Billy Bondi when uh, you saw him hiding the jerry can in the fence? About five meters from my bedroom window. Mrs. Chacho, I would like us to perform a little experiment. Please remove your specs. Objection. We are conducting experiments in court now. Your Honor, please indulge me. I will get to my point as we continue. Continue, uh, Mr. Mwako, but I hope this is not a waste of time. Oh, it isn't, Your Honor. Mrs. Chacho, please, your specs. I don't really know where you're headed with this. How many fingers have I raised? One. Good. What about now? How many fingers? Your Honor, do I really have to do this? My optician can provide a report about my eyesight. How many fingers? Two. Good. What about now? How many fingers have I raised? Three. Can you say that again? Three. Please put on your specs. It's one finger. Confirm. Okay, so what does that prove? Good. You are not able to make out when I raised one finger at the length of three meters. How about five meters for a face? So, did you see Billy Bondi hiding the jerry can and running away from the fire? Yes, I did. Or did you see somebody else and you, or, and you wanted him to be Billy Bondi? It, it was Billy Bondi. I saw him. I could tell from the form and the, and the type of clothes he was wearing. It was him. But we will never know, will we? Your eyesight fails you at three meters and above. The court takes a recess. We reconvene at 2 p.m. relationship between Delene and her ex-husband? Mm, I cannot say. Had he no hard feelings between, I mean, about the two of you? Okay, all I know is that he, he wanted Delene to get back with him. Other than that, I cannot think of anything else. His visitations were always only when you were out of the house. Yeah. 
How did you know? Just suspected. Hmm. What's up? I don't know yet. All I know is that something is up. I just wish I could put a finger to it. Is the uh, prosecution ready to call in their last witness? Yes, Your Honor. We call Cliff Maputo. What faith do you profess? I'm an atheist. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to say the truth? The whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Billy Maputo, you've been separated from your wife, Darlene Maputo. Yes. For how long have you been separated? Uh, six months. Why did you separate? We were going through the usual marital problems. Actually, she was having an affair with the man who killed her, Billy Bonde. We had separated hoping uh, wrongfully that the separation would help save our marriage. The next thing I knew, it had done the exact opposite and the man had moved in. Were you disappointed? Yes. I loved my wife, but after that happened, I concentrated on my career and uh, raising my children. On the material day of the fire, you had gone to pick your children for the weekend? Yes. Did you notice anything strange? When I, when I got into the house, I found the kids had locked themselves in their room, and they looked frightened. They told me mother was bleeding because Billy had beaten her up and they want to move with me because uh, Billy beats them up too, saying that uh, they don't listen to him. Liar! Liar! How could you? That is what my children told me and they can testify to the same if the court deems it so. Speak the truth! Mr. Bonde, control yourself. Mr. Mako? Easy. Easy? When I'm being accused of beating up children? Now this is the last warning. Another outburst like that and I will throw you out of my courtroom. If you won't do it again, you know. Well, he had better not. Please continue. So, what did you do next? I went to Darlene's bedroom, where I found her lying in pain. She was badly bruised. Her eyes, her cheeks, they were swollen. Her nose broken, cracked lips, and it seemed like she had a broken rib. It broke my heart to see her like this. I did some first aid on her wounds. Fed, cooked and fed her after she had gotten some strength back. She told me she was so sorry and she would like us to become a family again. She was totally sorry for cheating. You forgive her? For the sake, for the sake of her having my family back and protecting her from this maniac who had just turned her into his own punching bag. Yes, she agreed to move in with me as, and uh, where she could get some few days of rest as I took care of the situation with Billy. So we agreed that I should take her to the hospital. I packed a few essentials and the children's clothes. I took them to my place. I left them watching cartoons. 
rushed back to take Darlene to the hospital, only to find the house on fire. She was unable to escape. Now, my children, my children don't have a mother. It's too painful to think about it. I will never forgive myself for this. I should have figured it out that Billy was coming back. He was coming back and he would do something worse. My wife was in danger and I just left her. I left her unprotected and vulnerable. I will never forgive her for dying on me. It... I will never forgive myself for this. Sorry about uh, the loss. If you didn't love her anymore, all you had to do is leave her. Now, my children are motherless. My wife, she was my wife, my a mother to my children. Thank you, Anna. I'm sorry, I have to ask you some questions. It's all right. Uh, I will manage. You testified that uh, you got to the house and uh, managed to get in? Yes. So you had a spare key? It was our mat matrimonial home and we were still legally married. Of course I had the key. Uh, you mentioned that uh, Darlene was badly beaten and that you had the intention of taking her to hospital? Yes. She had uh, broken ribs, she had a broken nose, and her lips were cracked. She was badly hurt. It was an emergency. She was bleeding and in a lot of pain. Why didn't you take her to hospital immediately? I mean, isn't that the right thing to have done? I had to take care of the kids. You could still have money to take your wife to hospital together with the kids. But instead, you cleaned her wounds and fed her. Yet she was in excruciating pain. Why? Can I have an answer to that? She told me she was hungry. Her mouth was swollen. She had broken ribs too, and all she could think about was food. Excuse me, Your Honor. Well, don't take all day. Much obliged, Your Honor. Ah, I forget. She was hungry. You testified that uh, she was leaving her boyfriend to reunite with you, to be a family once again. She was very remorseful for the error she had made in judgment. Yeah. So remorseful was she that she filed for divorce one week before her death. In fact, according to the suit papers, you are already served with the divorce papers. Objection. Your Honor, this is new information the prosecution should have been briefed on. The same way I was briefed about the second fire investigation report. I will allow it. Go on. Thank you. You were served with the divorce papers the evening before the fire. I, w I did not receive any divorce papers. According to the divorce application, Darlene cited cruelty as grounds for divorce. 
wife battery? I did not receive the divorce papers. She also attacked photographs she had taken after one of your beatings. And a case she had filed with the police against you, which she withdrew one year before. Further to the divorce, she also made an application for full custody of the children. I see a motive there. Darlene Maputo had described you as an arrogant, selfish, self-righteous person with an anger management problem who was a danger to herself and her children. In one of her statements, she says that you used to beat her until she was unconscious. That is in her imagination. So when she decided to get rid of you from her life, you decided to kill her. I did not. So you snaked into the house with the spare key that you still have, went to the fence, hit the jerry can with the fuel, and waited for the right time to strike. You conveniently took your children away to safety. Then you went back, poured petrol all over the house, locked the doors, and lit the fire. I did not. Then you stayed around to make sure that she was really dead. You! You! You killed her! I, 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 I did not. Killed her in cold blood. You ignored her screams of anguish and watched as fire consumed her flesh. She deserved it. She deserved it. Yes, I killed her. I killed her. She was living with that bastard in my house. My house. Hearing her scream in pain gave me such satisfaction that I could not even compare with connecting my fist to her face. I rest my case.